On this broadcast about the Ark Encounter, I'm going to speak to some people who've been really neck deep in the discussions and in sort of the controversy about this thing going on in Kentucky and an Ark replica. And the mastermind of all of this is, of course, Ken Ham. But before I bring my guest onto the broadcast, I feel like I need to do due diligence and we need to sort of learn a little bit more about Ken Ham, who he is and what he's been doing. So give me just a second to do some quick setup for you here on the radio, okay? Ken Ham is an Australian-born young earth creationist. He currently lives in the U.S. He's a biblical literalist. The Bible is literally absolutely true. He claims the book of Genesis is absolute literal historical, scientific, perfect fact. It's truth. He received his college degree in applied science. He taught high school biology in Australia before he segued into full-time ministry. He and his wife ended up here in the United States and ultimately landed in northern Kentucky. The ministry Answers in Genesis was started back in 1994. It opened the Creation Museum in Petersburg, Kentucky on the 28th of May, 2007. That project, huge, an estimated $27 million and built with donations. I had a chance to go out with the uh, Freethinkers of Kentucky, we went out to the uh, Creation Museum a few years ago. I took a camera and actually videotaped the the entire tour with all of us atheists in a row, and I produced a video. You can find it on my YouTube channel. Just Google or YouTube Atheist at the Creation Museum. You can kind of see what we did. Ken Ham famously debated Bill Nye, the science guy, in February of 2014 at the actual Creation Museum. They did it right there at his venue, which many people thought was just a stupid idea uh, because in many ways they felt this was just a publicity stunt to help Ken Ham fund his next big venture, which of course is what we're talking about tonight. The Ark Encounter. Ken Ham says this, again, the Bible is without error. He believes the universe is 6,000 years old. He believes Noah's flood actually happened 4,400 years ago. That human beings walk the earth with dinosaurs. That radiometric dating of artifacts is not reliable, and therefore all of science's data is just completely jacked. That science educators promoting evolution by natural selection and the Big Bang, etc., do not and cannot prove their claims because, quote, were you there? This is his common rebuttal. He's been at war with the devil's doings for literally decades. Here's a September 2015 article in the Raw Story. It was titled, Creationist Ken Ham, Science Has Contaminated Kids into Believing Evolution and LGBT Rights. And if I may, I'd like to read just a paragraph from the article. It says this, quote, Doubting Genesis has had horrendous consequences, he lamented. It should come as no surprise that as generations are trained to disbelieve the Bible's account of origins, they also increasingly doubt the rest of the Bible. Go figure. That's a part of the greater satanic strategy that had its origin in the Garden of Eden. In chapter 8 of Kinham's book called The Lie Evolution, which published in 87, Ham blames the acceptance of atheistic evolution for racism, drug abuse, abortion, sexism, and of course, the Nazis. Now here we are almost three decades later. The Ark Encounter is imminent. It is upon us. Newsweek just published a story a few weeks ago titled Noah's Ark Rises in Kentucky, Dinosaurs and All, and the article describes a $101 million project on 99 acres of land. And it says this in the article, quote, Imagine the Titanic minus the smokestacks, framed out of timber rather than iron. Imagine that instead of a doomed ocean liner bustling with well-dressed elites, it's home to 2,000 seasick animals, a handful of teenage dinosaurs, and one patriarchal family headed by a 500-year-old man bent on saving the world. Now, advance tickets are already on sale for this thing, with a grand opening date set for July the 7th of this year. It remains to be seen whether or not this attraction will genuinely attract Many questions about the project, the people, the ministries, the companies, and of course, the money. And that's why we're talking tonight. Joining me are three people who've done a lot of homework on this. Ed and Michael Hensley live in Kentucky. They have a front row seat for the Ark Encounter. Ed and Michael are on staff at the Kentucky Secular Society. 
They are co-organizers of the Kentucky chapter of the Freedom From Religion Foundation. And Dan Errol is an award-winning journalist and author of the book Parenting Without God. He's also been monitoring the Ark Encounter and writing extensively on it online. You know, my friends, it's always... uh, Interesting to watch this hugely complex and expensive project, which requires tons and tons of manpower and state-of-the-art construction equipment to accomplish here in the 21st century. But somehow they're using it to prove that a guy did it 4,400 years ago with trees and tar. You know, it just boggles the mind. Ed, Michael, I'll start with you. You want to give us your initial thoughts on the Ark Encounter and what your experience has been with it? Well, my wife has actually fought the Creation Museum longer than I have, having attended a protest rally at its open, uh, Rally for Reason, way back in, I think, 2007. But our most recent battle has been over this uh, funding for uh, Ark Encounter, in particular, the tax rebates of up to $18 million from sales tax uh, from the income that the Ark Encounter might make. Um, We have fought it at multiple levels throughout the state with multiple individuals, phone calls, letters, petition drives, uh, booth at the state fair, Kentucky Open Records Act. We uh, went secretly videotaped some of their events and secretly tape recorded phone calls, did anything that we could, uh, press releases. We got, uh, got, on blog- their mailing list. Yeah, got on their mailing list. Now, now hang, on, hang on, hold on just a second. Legally, you taped the phone calls, or are you in a dual consent state where they have to know? It was legal in Kentucky to uh, tape to uh, uh, record the phone calls. Okay, so you're doing a little investigative reporting. Let me come back to the opening of the Creation Museum. Michael, you protested. Were you just saying this is anti-science indoctrination, or was there another angle to the protest? Take me back to that 2007 protest at the Creation Museum. I think at the time I was pretty new to anything to do with atheist organizing and I found, I've been online and I was looking up stuff by Edwin Kagan, who was um, big in Kentucky. He was the legal director for American Atheists. I'm not sure if he was at the time. He was? Okay. But he'd organized this, uh, the protest and I decided to go out and join them for the protest. And, um, so did Ken Ham acknowledge you guys at all? Did he come out and pray for you? Did he? Oh, no, we didn't see. We never saw him the whole time we were there. But we, uh, but we had some interaction with people go, driving by on the road to the uh, Creation Museum. Well, you know, with the Ark Encounter, like the Creation Museum, he's going after the kids, and it's it's sad to see that he's using the things that kids love. You know, it, it all this fanciful stuff and Universal Studios quality production levels and and whatnot. He's just wowing them visually, but when you you realize really what he's doing, it's it's really pretty sinister. He is pounding this sort of guilt led pseudoscience, anti science, fantasy science into their impressionable minds. Yeah, I can. Uh, relate highly with with that you know that's one of the things that bothers me is that i was that science loving homeschool kid who was being fed creationist propaganda even in my homeschool biology text and when i found out the truth about evolution it made me angry because i felt like people had lied to me in fact i felt that was one of the number one things that caused me to to reject Christianity was because I felt that people had lied to me in the name of God. Now, it's not the only thing now, but it was one of the major things for me early on. I can't tell if Ken Ham genuinely believes or not. Who really knows his heart, right? Who who can really look in and and know if he's a businessman or if he's a a true believer? Uh, I suspect he may genuinely have, have bought all of this stuff, hook, line, and sinker, and he's doing God's good work, but... You know, there's another part of me that thinks uh, he ain't poor. <laughs> you know, so I mean, I go back and forth a little bit in my mind. Dan Errol, you want to weigh in on any of this real quick? Uh, sure. Well, speaking of the last thing you were talking about there, Ken Ham's belief, I, I I kind of fall on the it's a little of both. I think he believes it, but he also knows how to play the words properly to convince people to send him money. Uh, he actually once raved and ranted on a blog post about having to pay an extra six thousand dollars for a plane ticket. And I'm thinking he's asking people that 
you know, probably have very little money to give as much as they can. And he's complaining about his first class ticket that he wanted to upgrade. Uh, so yeah. I think there's a little of both. He's, I, I believe he's as crazy as he sounds. <laughs> But he knows he knows how to play it. Um, it. Every blog post he ends says thanks for praying, and praying is a hyperlink that goes to a donation page. Let me digress here very quickly because I got uh, a message on Facebook, and I'm sharing this with permission. I won't give her name, but she said this, and I received this just two hours before the broadcast. She said, my in-laws recently did a behind-the-scenes tour I uh, guess is a, of the Ark Encounter. I don't know many of the details, but at the end, they were given a copy of the book I linked to, and she sent me a copy of a book, which I'll bring up in just a second. And they're now reviewing their estate and trusts. Guess who got, quote, prayed on, but they used spelled it like pray. They are head over heels on board with Ken Ham and is ilk, and it makes me sick. They ask all their children to submit answers to questions that were in this book, Basically, how Jesus-oriented are you with your current money so they can decide if you get any inheritance or if Ken gets it. It wasn't stated in those terms, but it, but it was implied. I was shocked. It's their money. They can do what they want. But I'm just surprised by it all. If an elderly couple visits the Ark, you can guarantee they will get sold into signing over their estates. And the book that was recommended to them was a book written by E.G.J. Link, called To Whom Much is Given, Navigating the Ten Life Dilemmas a Fluent Christian's Face, a Stewardship Guide to Godly Decision-Making. So there's a title, a subtitle, and a sub-subtitle, all of it saying, essentially, your money belongs to God, and Ken Ham may want it. <laughs> kind of thing, you know? Um, I don't know, Ed. Money is a weird thing over there. There's a lot of corporations and ministries and fronts and companies and what who's got the money and who's tax free who's a ministry who's a business flesh this out for me man at the moment ark encounter is the for-profit company it is owned by answers in genesis a not-for-profit ministry it is managed by crosswater canyon a not-for-profit ministry that is owned by answers in genesis it is so answers in genesis is the parent company they're getting up to $18 million over 10 years in sales tax rebates if they get enough sales tax, if they have enough admission and they raise enough money. They also have a $62 million bond through uh, Williamson County. They're using what's called a tax increment financing, and I would have you reference that Newsweek article to go into detail on what that means. But basically, they get a 75% deduction on their property property tax, and then money is hopefully over 30 years paid back uh, through uh, their funds, uh, through repaying the bonds. Um, in addition, the employees there are all uh, taxed 2% to also pay back that bond. So some of the people who will definitely be paying back the bond will be some of the employees. All right, hang on, hang on. If I get a job at at the Ark Encounter, they pay me a paycheck, and then they tax my paycheck to help pay for the Ark Encounter. That is correct, 2%. Dan Errol, come on. The, the ministry is a business. The business is a ministry. What's going on? So uh, Freedom From Religion Foundation noticed that the Ark Encounter was asking for donations to help fund the Ark Encounter, so they sent a letter to the IRS basically highlighting how uh, blatantly illegal it is for a for-profit business to, or a not-for-profit business to take money in and then give it to a for-profit business to, uh, you know, build itself. Uh, Americans United noticed the same exact thing, noticing that they're using these three entities to take money and move money around uh, in a way that allows them to discriminate and to do tax write-offs, uh, even for do donors, to fund a for-profit business. And I think uh, Ed had sort of alluded to that earlier where he works for a, a shipping company where, you know, you can't take in money to build a new building to store boxes if you're, that's not a, if it's a for-profit business and you can't say, oh, it's a tax write-off because you're donating to us. But we have tax laws in place for these reasons. Uh, Answers to Genesis, uh, Crosswater Canyon, Ken Ham are taking advantage of the fact that the IRS doesn't investigate 
ministries. Uh, it's very hard for the IRS to investigate a ministry. And they can push this as long as they, they want. And chances are no one's ever going to look into it. And so they just play the religious persecution card if the IRS comes a knock and they're like, you're infringing on my faith kind of thing? Second, somebody said this was a bad idea. Uh, so yeah, they'll play a religious persecution card as quickly as they can. Uh, I think it's in, in Ken Ham's stack of cards, it's the only card he actually has. Uh, anything you say to him whatsoever is anti-Christian and Christian persecution. So, you know, I think the Ark Encounter is a bad idea. Christian persecution. I think you're damaging perfectly good land to build a landlocked boat. Christian persecution. Uh, I think taking people's taxpayer money to continue to build your park is a, you know, a separation of church and state issue. For Christian persecution, why do you hate Christians so much? Um, which are questions he asked me repeatedly when I debated him on a radio show uh, almost two years ago was how much I hate Christians. Uh, he would never address the actual issues. He addressed uh, my persecution of him and the Christian people, and you would have thought I was trying to rile them up and put them in camps uh, with the language he uses, which is quite interesting. Well, let's come uh, to the the creationist statement of faith on these job applications. I think at first, was it not stipulated that they would uh, accept anybody and everybody who wanted to work for the Ark Encounter? And then later on, all of a sudden, we saw this pretty lengthy job application, which requires that I think you be a, a Christian and you have to affirm a creationist statement of faith. You actually have to line up with their young earth creationist theology. Anybody want to speak to that? Yes. In the 2010 Ark Encounter application with the state of Kentucky for the tax rebates, they agreed that they would not discriminate religiously in employment. However, they didn't get the $172 million that they needed for that massive project. So they scaled it down to $73 million, applied again in 2014, and they asked the state to change that from non-religious discrimination to uh, they will follow all state and local laws. The state took it to mean one way, and, and Answers in Genesis took it to mean that they could discriminate religiously in employment. And that's what they've been doing through job applications, whether it's on the Answers in Genesis website or Ark Encounter website, is you have to have that uh, statement of faith. They wouldn't even hire an old earth Christian creationist. If I believed in guided evolution, I believed in a partially literal Bible. If I went to a Christian church on Sunday morning, they still wouldn't take me? They would not take you, no. They wouldn't let you serve ice cream. I, I feel religiously persecuted, guys. It's just terrible. Tell me about your governor there in Kentucky, would you? Matt Bevan, what's the story? He's behind this thing or what? Well, the prior governor, Steve Bashir, through a massive amount of effort from a lot of citizens of Kentucky and others outside Kentucky, uh, we convinced Governor Steve Bashir not to accept their application. However, the recent election, uh, we had Matt Bevan, the Republican, win. And he's in favor of Ark Encounter. Ark Encounter filed a lawsuit. Uh, we had a George W. Bush appointed judge rule in their favor that not only should they get the $18 million, that they should um, be permitted to, to uh, discriminate religiously in employment. And then the governor has basically said, we're going to settle with them. We're you know, even before I could write a rebuttal to the governor asking to appeal, he announced that they're not going to appeal it. So that's a situation now we're kind of stuck with that uh, decision, which is technically an injunction and not a decision at that point, at this point. Well, is this guy like a Ted Cruz? I don't know much about Bevan. Is he like a Ted Cruz type? Is he just an evangelical? And He challenged, he challenged uh, oh, Senator Mitch McConnell for the uh, Republican primary uh, for Senate last time. He was the Tea Party candidate, and he was a serious candidate against McConnell. He is much more conservative than McConnell. He is Tea Party supported. You kind of get the impression he's probably, uh, you know, he's wringing his hand. He's probably doing a tap dance that something that affirms his personal faith is now coming to his state, where before they weren't qualifying for the tax incentives, now they get them, where before they were required not to discriminate, now they're allowed to. All this has happened under the new governor's watch? 
yes, all this has happened. Um, I think that the judge also purposefully waited for the election to be over. I read the judge's transcripts in July, or the transcripts of the trial, and I knew which way the judge was going. I've known that. You know, it wasn't official, but I've known it for months. And if he would have made the final decision in October, Steve Bashir could have immediately appealed. But he waited until Bevin got into office, and I think that was planned on his part because he knew there would not be an appeal. And he knew that if there was an appeal, he had a good chance of losing once it got up to a higher court. Dan Errol, anything else on this? You know, the judge's decision definitely seemed like it came at a purposeful time uh, because it would lose an appeal because he very much ignored a 2004 Supreme Court ruling, uh, Locke v. Davey, which actually ruled that states have the right to discriminate against allowing religious organizations to take part in tax benefited uh, programs. So if you're building a tourism tax incentive program like Kentucky did, they actually have the legal right to say religious organizations cannot participate. Uh, and Locke v. Davy was based on a college ruling where a school had offered a scholarship and a kid got into the school, asked for the scholarship, but he wanted to use it towards a theology degree. And the state ruled, well, no, that's, you know, you're trying to go to a, a Christian school. We can't give you taxpayer money for that. It went all the way to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court ruled that uh, the state actually was correct, that they shouldn't be giving uh, state-based scholarships to private Christian colleges or universities. Uh, Americans United agrees that this case uh, weighs heavily on Kentucky and would overturn the ruling if the state had decided to appeal. Uh, Governor uh, Bashir had originally you know, very much made it clear that he would appeal if he had lost. So the judge knew that going into his ruling, that Bashir would take this higher and waited until after the election to issue a ruling. Ed and Michael, where's the outrage? Are we seeing taxpayer protests over this? Are people writing letters to the local paper? Are you guys making the news? I mean, is the other side being represented beyond the letters that you guys are writing from a free thought organization? Well, it's been one week, and we had the decision on one day, and then the governor's response saying he wasn't going to appeal two days later. And I haven't seen a huge out. There's been an outcry on social media, Facebook, and everything else. Uh, it's been discussed quite a bit, and everyone's been asking what can be done, what can be done. But I haven't seen a lot in the Courier Journal. Have you heard anything on the local news or radio? They, they discussed it, but I haven't heard outrage from reporters. What's the vibe? I mean, I, I know this is subjective. Michael, maybe I'll direct this to you since I've been talking to the other guys here for a second. But I mean, when you talk to the person on the street and the Ark Encounter comes up, is it a largely religious area? Oh, great. Ken Ham's coming back to town. Or are they ambivalent? Or have they just given up because it's going to happen anyway? It opens in a few months. I mean, what's the vibe? Well, my impression is, you know, we judging from the enthusiasm we had about our petition at the state fair to deny the tax incentives, my impression that with this and with a lot of things is people would love to, you know, pitch in somehow, you know, in their busy schedules to uh, to fight this, but not, you know, maybe they just don't know what it is that they can do. It may be a bit overwhelming, right, with all the different angles, all the different entities and all the money at play, the legalities of it. Many people probably just see that and they go check out and, you know, they're watching Entertainment Tonight or something, right? We, we are dependent upon the national organizations, FFRF, Americans United. You know, Michael and I don't have enough money to file a lawsuit. And, uh, and we would uh, need a response from them. You know, this is all conjecture, but let's just talk. It opens, fanfare, some big opening crowds, and then what? Is it going to be an attraction long term? And how is the Creation Museum doing these days? Anybody know? Well, I've uh, seen uh, their 990 forms. I know that they lost money in 2013. Their expenses for the Creation Museum were $8 million. Their income was $4 million. 
So they lost $4 million, but they made up a lot of that through donations and through sales. Uh, they are drastically losing attendance every year. It's declining. And they are losing money, but they still have a lot stockpiled. Yeah, well, Ed, weren't they going to put zip lines in over there or something to spice it up? I, I, I don't know. I read it or heard it somewhere. Right. It's, you know, it seems like a gimmick that they're setting up to try to pull people in where it's like with the, with creationism, what are they going to put for new exhibits? This isn't like a real science museum where they can set up a new exhibit or update their science. Yeah. There's not a new discovery for them to wow people with. It's the same story. What, you know, what else is there for them to do? Yeah. Dan, do you think it's going to be a, kind of a short-term splash and then fade away? I mean, what's your gut tell you? Very short-term. Uh, it's going to have a little bit. Of, I don't even. I don't even know sales numbers at this point. So there might not even be a big opening day celebration. We're no one's really too sure how excited the American populace is to flock to a boat to walk through it and go home, uh, and to fly to Kentucky to do so. Like. There's, they're not offering a whole lot else in return. He's he's trying to say it's going to be as big as Disneyland. Uh, I think it's going to come out. It's going to be a bit of a whimper. Uh, the Hunden report really shows that people aren't interested. They said three hundred twenty-five thousand in the first year. That's that's probably fifteen minutes at Disney World. <laughs> I was looking. It's uh, got some attractions listed. Just terrifying stuff, of course, guaranteed to fill us with horror. They're going to have a petting zoo. Uh, they're going to have exhibits that demonstrate, quote, flood geology. So prepare yourself. Uh, apparently, a, an exhibit or demonstration showing that there's only been one ice age, which, of course, contrasts the claim of geologists that there have been at least five major ice ages, the earliest over two billion years ago. And rumor has it they'll also apparently be taking children back into an interrogation chamber where they're hooked up to wires and waterboarded until they accept the book of Genesis and a young earth. You know, I'm just saying it's just what I heard. Um, any final thoughts on the Ark Encounter before I let you guys go? I'll, I'll start with you, Ed. Anything you want to cap this conversation with? I do agree that it will have lower attendance than their crazy projections that were made by a co-author of a book with Ken Ham. But uh, I would just add, don't underestimate him and his followers in that, uh, while I don't think they're going to have the numbers that they want, it, it uh, might last several years before it goes out of business. And then what? And it becomes like a a big lot or something. I mean, what 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 happens to this? Is the world's largest paperweight is what this thing becomes if it financially fails? I, I it ninety nine acres and a huge arc replica. Well, I have no idea what they do with it. You know, it would be one of the abandoned theme parks <laughs> that you can sometimes see funny pictures of throughout the world. Michael, any final thoughts? My thought on the recent court decision is one of, I know right now it's an injunction and it's not law, but stuff like this, especially after Hobby Lobby puts me in some worry that, you know, what if it did become law that a for-profit business that is owned by a religious organization now has the right to discriminate based on religion or based on, or whoever, based on whatever else they might decide is acceptable. You know, there's already an exemption for churches and really and nonprofit religious organizations, which is which I think is fine. But once you get started getting into the for profit world and you get like the Marriott chain of hotels, which is owned by the Mormon church, I believe, if, if that's still right. Well Bill Marriott's a Mormon. I don't know if the church itself owns it, but it's um, worth looking into. Yeah, I, I, that's, but but in the case, you know, we know that there are some businesses, coffee shops, what have you, that are owned by churches. Would this would this be paving the way to allow them to start discriminating and hiring? And that's you know, at this point, that's the that's what concerns me the most. Dan Errol, uh, I want to end on 
a good note. I'm going to remind people that they're not ever going to see $18 million. Uh, in order to qualify for the $18 million, they still have to be approved for it. Uh, their application now has to be accepted for the lawsuit. But the state isn't going to use the Ark Encounter's own uh, attendance record study. They've already paid for their own from Hunden Research. It's a lot lower. So chances are the tax uh, board will approve them for a much lower tax amount, but then they actually have to get the sales to get it. So as much as the ruling itself is very harmful to separation of church and state, and we have a lot of work to do there, uh, I want people to remember that people are going to have to show up and buy a lot of stuff for them to get that tax money. So if people don't show up, if if the attendance isn't there, and if the state does the right thing and uses the 100 report, which they paid for already, uh, Ken Ham's going to see a lot less money than he's touting. And uh, at this point, I would take the less money he gets is the better off for everybody else in that state. Dan, what is that thing behind your head? <laughs> <laughs> Staring at that. Well, that is something my wife hung up. It is a Boston Terrier painting that my son wouldn't let be in his room because it terrified him. <laughs> I mean, it is it is awesome, but I feel kind of I mean, like I'm being he's it's staring through me, Dan. Yes, it's um, it's controlling you. <laughs> no time. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to post links to a lot of what we've talked about in the description box of the interview here for your time and for your input and for your activism, for just helping to get the word out. Thank you. We'll, we'll watch. I'm trying in my own mind to decide if I'm going to go and tour the damn thing and go back and give a report. I, I think, Ed, when we did the Creation Museum, you guys got us some sort of a group discount. I, I want these guys to get as little of my money if you know as possible, but at the same time, I am insanely curious to see what hideous anti-science things lurk behind it. Are you guys going to go? Or are you going to skip it? The Creation Museum is free on Christmas Eve, and we encourage locals to go if they want to look at it on that day. And if they do something similar to that, that's when we would encourage people to go. And I know, you know, one of the reasons we went with you is it maybe helped you decide to come speak at the Kentucky Free Thought Convention. And uh, if I am in favor of bloggers, a few bloggers and uh, writer, writers, journalists going in and taking a look at it, I don't want like 300 people from the Secular Student Alliance coming in from Columbus, Ohio to go see it with PZ Myers. I don't want to give them that much money. Um, that's just my, my, my personal thing. I would, I would rather not see, I'd rather see it through your eyes than me give them money. So if you want to do it, you're more than welcome to, but I don't want any more large groups going up there. What do you think, Dan? You want to, well, grab, grab some bottles of brew and, you know, I'll grab my Jesus shaves mug and my t-shirt that says, has Jesus touched you? Show me on the doll t-shirt and we'll all go to the, I mean, what do you, what do you think? You know, I'm in, let's do it. Uh, right. we'll, we'll, we'll find someone to get us some press passes. So we don't have to pay. <laughs> Well, thanks so much for your input, for being a part of the broadcast, for helping to spread the word. And uh, we'll just see what happens when the grand opening happens in a few months. You guys take care, okay? Thank you very Thank much you, for having us. Thank you, Seth.